Hey there guys, Spazzy Dragon here, aka Syndrams, and welcome to this little video. The small group of my closest friends already know this, but if anyone is careless enough to mention the topic of our old childhood games, then my immediate contribution to that topic would be going on and on about Unreal Tournament 2004. Whenever that subject pops up, 2004 will always be my go-to game for a myriad of reasons, regardless of the fact that it is by far not my first video game, nor it is the game that I've played the most. And for those who are wondering what those titles are, they are still retained by Angband, my first PC game, and Discovery Freelancer, of which I've played about 10 years straight, respectively. I was, of course, always very quick to also point out that I didn't really care about the origins of Unreal Tournament. I didn't really care much uh, for Unreal Tournament 99. I didn't really have any fondness for the, in my opinion, the mess that was Unreal Tournament 3 later. For me, it was only 2004. Even to this date, Unreal Tournament 2004 was my favorite game of all time, so much so that I thought to make my own contribution to the videos venerating its existence and its impact on the gaming world. That, judging from the video date footage for this video, was something that I've set out originally to do about a year ago, and in the end it was that idea to make that video that made me reconsider and realize that I might be wrong. After all, I had to actually install the game in order to get that footage, and it's kind of obvious that even when I do install it once every two years to indulge in nostalgia or something, it never really remains on my hard drive for more than two weeks. That should have been a good giveaway that I was misinterpreting my own opinion on the subject. That original video never saw the light of day, but today I bring to you its follow-up, because while I have now realized that 2004 is not my most favorite game ever, I see now for what it actually is and why I was so keen to think otherwise some time ago. And that's because Unreal Tournament 2004 was the single most significant impact on the whole of my gaming experience. At the end of this year I will be 31 years old, and I've been exposed to the world of computer games since a relatively young age of 9 years old when my dad bought me a Nintendo Famicom. And while I do think that a video describing my experience as someone living in a post-Soviet country and experiencing that Western gaming legacy, well, technology-wise I was lagging behind 10 years or so, could be an interesting one, uh, that info is not really vital for this video. All you have to know is that by the time that we had a computer and an internet connection in our household in the mid-2000s, and uh, I had someone installed the uh, cracked version of Unreal Tournament 2004 on my family PC, I already had gained a fairly large, though mechanically stunted, experience when it comes to shooters. The reason for that was that back in those days, internet cafes were actually very popular for kids like me whose families did not have a computer of their own, especially during my early teens, which was the time where I had developed a very strong appetite for online shooters, having spent hours in games like Counter-Strike 1.5 and Half-Life Deathmatch, simply because that, apart from games like Moo Online, Warcraft 3, GTA Vice City, those were the most popular games you could find on those computers. From the get-go, Unreal Tournament 2004 made a huge impression on me simply from the game mechanics alone. Remember, I was coming from games like Counter-Strike, so the ability to dodge, the ability to double jump, vehicular gameplay, the map design, the mutator mechanic, it was simply mind-boggling considering the games I played in the past. I mean, I thought that being able to install a silencer on my rifle in Counter-Strike was the bee's knees. Now, of course, the fact that it was a cracked copy prevented me from accessing its multiplayer component, and here comes the fun part. After playing the demo version just to feel that multiplayer experience, and then outright ending up maining the demo for a long time because I really liked the multiplayer, it made me realize one simple fact. Some games are worth buying. Terrible, I know, but I got like 10 bucks per week as a kid to buy myself lunch with, so that really wasn't an um, option in those times. Unreal Tournament 2004 was the first game I legitimately bought. 
well, to be more precise, I took the money I got for my birthday and gave it to someone who wasn't 14 at the time and actually had a credit card and could buy it for me online. And fun fact, uh, I still have the original disc right here. And that's the first of the many things that Unreal helped me develop. Over time, especially once I grew up and obtained a paying job, I pretty much abandoned the notion of gaming piracy as a whole. Well, it didn't happen for another five years or so after that. I still think that uh, this purchase did help quite a fair bit uh, into getting me into the right mindset for that sort of thing. Unreal Tournament 2004 also has mini mods. They are called mutators. And dealing with them was my first introduction to modding in general. The fact that it was as easy as throwing in a few files into your system install folder of the game made it so that even a kid like me could actually do this very easily. As time went on, there were a few very interesting sites that I came across for this. For example, that's how I discovered Mo Nexus Mods, that's how I discovered ModDB, UT Zone, etc. All of which provided me with a lot of interesting material. One of the more fun ones I remember was the Ballistic Weapons mod, which is in by itself almost weighted a good chunk as the original game. This was also a time when I was introduced to the concept of total conversion mods in the form of Red Orchestra or Guns of Icarus, both of which went on to become standalone games. I think that this experience with Unreal normalized my views on game modding and helped me end up coming across stuff like Discovery Freelancer and uh, Project Reality for Battlefield 2. It became obvious to me that any time in any game always had more content for me it was if I was bothered enough to look it up on ModDB. And so it's kind of nice to know and realize that the mantra of modded until it breaks was known to me personally way before Skyrim was a thing. Now at some point in time I realized that even though I had the official game, there were plenty of official maps that my install had to download from servers that I was playing on. It made me look up more info about them, and that's how I came across the concept of official community bonus packs. User-made content in the forms of maps, mutators, and weapons were packaged up and available from the official Unreal site. Not gonna lie, that kind of blew my mind and showed me another aspect of mods in general. That the game devs could actually approve of them and even pay the creators. Oh, that was a very interesting thought for the young me. And the content itself was also very nice. I still remember the first time I loaded up and heard the background theme for the Killbilly Barn deathmatch map or the Outback Assault map, whose name currently eludes me, actually. After that experience, next up, as you might expect, came the editor. Oh yes, of course, since I already had the system folder open for when I was installing mutators, I did notice the green icon belonging to Unreal Ed. And upon opening it, the 15-year-old me kind of just stared at it and was just like, nope, nope, and I, you know, I would just close it. But now I had the motivation to look into it. I even started looking up basic Unreal Ed tutorials, and soon enough, I had a blank room with a light source and a default concrete texture all around it. Man, I was so proud of myself. And of course, over time, I was making my own crappy maps and genuinely having fun doing so. But even then, as a kid, I did have troubles keeping up with my projects, so, of course, none of them ever ended up on UTZone or ModDB, but it was still fun as heck. The side effect of having the full version meant that I was also given a chance to screw around with many of the custom map designs. And there were a huge multitude of very odd maps. There were racing maps where you had to navigate narrow beams with hellbenders and scorpions, for example, and I still distinctly remember having fun shooting my opponents off the side of those things with my hellbender's rear turret. But some of the more odder and more memorable ones were the trials. And by trial, I mean the sort of trial which associates with a dude on a bike jumping and balancing on obstacles. Those maps were built with movement mechanics of the game in mind, including shield jumping, wall dodging, timing, and, you know, stuff like that. And considering the movement system was always one of my most favorite aspects about Unreal Tournament, that just, they instantaneously were added to my server favorites. Another odd type that was basically Gary's mod before there was a Gary's mod, uh, you had guns that could place down items, and you had to kind of position yourself to rotate them before placing them down. 
These servers were huge maps with open spaces where you could just allow people to build structures and sculptures. It was kind of like Minecraft or, again, like Gmod. Looking back at it, this whole experience lasted maybe two or three years at best, but in those days, time did feel a lot slower, so it felt like such a long trip. Later on, I also ended up playing Unreal Tournament 3, which did not really seem as groundbreaking to me, considering from all the stuff that I learned from 2004. Mind you, I never played Gears of War, and so I never had that negative association with it, but it's more 99-esque movement mechanics and the lack of mod ability made it feel like a downgrade. That, and I was really angry that the game's single player was about some sort of war and not a, you know, an unreal tournament like a blood sport, and the devs tried to explain game mechanics such as the ability to respawn after death with actual lore. And in a way that was so trivial and so half-assed, there actually made no sense to even try doing that. The only good thing that I could say about that is that I loved how Unreal Tournament 3 looked visually. The vehicle damage model especially was unlike other games where the car would take specific sort of damages and predetermined ways, the level of damage in Unreal 3 was much more gradual, and it all made up even more amazing sights when you had to use the link gun to repair your vehicle, so you kind of could watch them grow back all of their lost items and seeing all the bullet marks seal up. And it still looks amazing. I recently moved to a 2K monitor, and the first thing that I downloaded apart from Crisis, obviously, was Unreal 3, just because of that. It still looks amazing. Later on towards the 2010s, my gaming PC broke, and I ended up using a netbook. Remember those things? Small Intel GMA chipped, Intel Atom processor little things? Oh, man. Oh... It was uh, during this time that I ended up uh, trying the original Unreal Tournament for myself, and uh, yeah, I wasn't a fan. But again, the whole point of the story is that the reason why I thought 2004 to be my favorite game ever had nothing to do with nostalgia. It simply had an amazing amount of impact on my gaming experience further on, to a point where no other game since then has ever come even close to it. These days, I do not have a favorite game. It just is how it is. There are so many of them. There are just the ones that I love and those of which I find cool for one reason or another. Um, of course, there is also my perpetual game of choice at any given time that I play every day. It used to be Discovery Freelancer and then it used to be World of Tanks. Uh, these days, it's Plan Side 2. Who knows what else is going to be there? Time and context. This is the main takeaway for me personally now that I had a choice to get my thoughts in order about this, and I'm glad to have an excuse to make this video. So, hey, tell me, do you have a game like this? A game that does not necessarily hold up to today's titles, but was still a big deal in your life. Write it down in the comments, I'll actually read it, I'll reply to you. And again, Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of this sort of content, I am considering uh, bringing back uh, some of my 15 Minutes of X series, where I talk about old games I used to play and the fun moments that I had about them. There are many very obscure titles there. For example, before Battlefield 2 and its commander role, I actually had the same experience in a game called Savage Battle for New Earth. But yeah, feel free to leave your thumbs up or down, and uh, you know, as usual, this is Fancy Dragon, aka Syndromes. Fly safe.